Yo, this is it on the play. It's Pokemon Diamond. We are halfway through the Elite Four. We have battled Aaron the Bugmaster and Bertha the Groundmaster. Both of them have been defeated. Now we're gonna move on to our third Elite Four member. Before we do that, we need to make our Pokemon ready and going for our next battle. So one reason I bought a lot of hyper potions and so on is to use them for these upcoming battles. I'm gonna use no water here, all out. So for next Elite Four member, I'm gonna switch out my party a bit, so I'll have Float Soap in first instead of Roserade. And let's go! Aha! We've seen this guy before! This is Flint! Remember him and Sunnyshore when he asked us to lit the fire in Walkner so he wanted to battle us? Well, remember that he was a Elite Four member, and if you kinda realize from his uh, way he talked, and also from the color of his hair, he is using a type of Pokemon that we want to battle against first, so that's why I have my, uh, my dear Pokemon Float Cell first. It is because he's a fire type trainer, so fire versus water, water should win in most cases, but not always. Regardless of that, here we go, the fire Elite Four member, Flint. Yo, trainer! You had me counting the days on my fingers waiting for you to come. I heard from Walkner what you did in Sunny Shore. You managed to light a fire in that guy's heart again. How could you not expect me to look forward to seeing you in battle? Here we go, the third Elite Four member of the Sinnoh region, Flint, and his Fire-type Pokémon. And the first one he'll be using will be Rapidash. Generation 1 Pokémon. He's level 50. Eight. That's kind of high level. It's eleven levels higher than my float zone. Regardless, I will start off with a surf. Oh, here's a problem. Now, Rapidash just using Solar Beam right now. I use a surf on Rapidash. Now, if I survive the Solar Beam right now then Rapidash should be fainting. Perhaps I should switch out my Pokémon to counter the Solar Beam. The best way to do so, in my opinion, will be to use Dialga, in my opinion. He should, I think he's double resistant to grass attacks. I'm pretty sure. Using pressure. Yeah, he has a four time weakness, four time strength strong again against grass types. Solar Beam doesn't budge at all. Metal Claw won't be really good here. But I can use Dragon Claw. Or even Ancient Power for that matter. Sunny Day by Rapidash, which means Fire Power will increase, Solar Beam will be instant, accuracy of electric moves will go down, and water type moves will go down as well. Power, super effective, and down goes Rapidash. Some XP for Floatzel and Roserade and Dialga. And Sunlight is still going strong. The next Pokemon to fight will be Infernape. Ooh, damn. Now Infernape is getting boosted by this. Should we fight Infernape with Infernape, perhaps? We we'll use Float Cell, but I'm fearing this won't really do much as long as we have this weather. I'll go matching Mirror Match with Infernape versus Infernape. Probably not the best choice, but I think that's gonna be a fine choice. At least I'll counter up the fire gain he has. And go with Close Combat. He's gonna go with Earthquake! Oh damn, he knows Earthquake! Oh damn. Well, that's bad for me, because that's super effective. That might be enough to KO me, I think. It is... Ooh! Holy crap, I survived with two health! Close combat in Infernip's butt, or face, whatever. Holy crap, that was close. 
course, Infernap has a berry as well, which will make him recover. Now this next move then should KO Infernape. Infernape though get some uh, health back from Shell Bell, I think at least. So that is strong for Infernape. So it's 61. Thunder Punch. Which means down goes Infernape. Ooh, that was a tough one. So that remains strong. Probably use the Raptor for this one, because the Raptor is effective against fighting types, even though I'm a bit afraid of Infernape, should we say. I do get to Intimidate, though, so I can reduce his attack power. But I'm fearing his Thunder. Okay, let's go with Brave Bird here. Let's go all out. Mach Punch! Which is a fighting move that hits first, prior to move. Does a Brave Bird! All out! Stab bonus 120, where well, will go? How much damage will Brave Bird do to Infernape? It's a KO! Recoil will hit hard though. Ooh, damn, I want, I want 40 damage on the recoil, that's pretty good. But I don't care, Infernape goes down, this is a big thing for us. Infernape is the most difficult Pokemon, I guess, Flint has. Sonnet is still strong. Our next Pokemon will be... Steelix. Okay, so that's a bit bad thing that I took out my own uh, Pokemon earlier. But we can also fight Steelix with Floatzel. Not the best choice though, because Steelix is not strong against water, he's weak. Problem is that Sunday Day is still active, so I need Sunday Day to go out first. But I'm confident though. Don't use Waterfall though, that will do little damage. But Surf will do fine. Not 4 time weakness against Onyx, but still it takes still some damage from it. Almost half. Fire Fang. Won't do much. Because Float Cell is a water type. I do get burned though, so this means attack power goes down. But the Sunlight is faded, this is great. This means now the water Pokemon move is back to power. That means this Surf should finish off Steelix. Let's see. Will this be enough for Steelix? It is. Steelix goes down. That means we're taking down three of the Pokémon from Flint. He has two more. Level 48 on Float Cell. Next up will be... Let's see. After the Burn Ticks gonna be Drift Blim. Now, I don't understand why he uses Drift Blim. Drift Blim is not even a fire type, it's a ghost and flying. You also heard the name Ghost and Flying? Luxray, perhaps? Yeah, I think so. Luxray, come on out! It's time to play. So Drift Blim, which is a ghost and flying type. So it means it's weak, two electric attacks. Let's see how it does when I give it a Thunderbolt. On his wins. Do some damage. A thunderbolt will too. Is it super effective as well? Will it be enough though? Because Drifflim is tanky. More than half. Oh, it's two thirds about. So one more hit should do it. Double team. This means evasion increase on Drift Limb. That means my Thunderbolt, my miss. It doesn't. That means Drift Limb will perish. Or I mean, that, okay, that's a bit long. Still. It will go down anyways. A crit as well, super effective. Drift Limb goes down. XP for Luxray and Roserade. Luxray is level 51. Next, the final Pokémon is Lopunny. Of all Pokémon, Lopunny. Now, I could have finished it off in one hit with Infernape, but that's fine. I'll instead switch in to Staraptor for this one. Now, Lopunny is not even a Fire-type either. Flint is a Fire-type trainer, and he has only two Fire-type Pokémon out of five. Lopunny is a Normal-type Pokémon. I can feel your determination. Your will is overpowering me. 
We'll see about that. Lopani, the final Pokémon of Mr. Flint. Fire Punch. Does fine damage, but not too much. Close combat. No stab bonus, but it's super effective. Hardening move as well. Lopani survives. The situation this is heating up. I'm blazing now. Charm. Which means my attack power will greatly go down with the uh, Star Raptor. But will this close combat still be done though? Will it be enough? Or will it be not enough? It's enough. Low punny goes down. And that means Flint has no more Pokemon to use. Beat Flint. I wasn't expecting this. I was looking down to you, but I didn't think for one second that I'd lose. This is fantastic. You and your Pokemon are inspiring. Ugh. Burned right down to cinders. A man of lost his words. That can happen. Well, that was a very cool fight against uh, Flint right there. So now we're gonna move on to our next Elite Four, the final one. Now, what wondering what type of Elite Four are we gonna face now? Well, first thing we're going to do is to change our Pokemon a bit. Let's get a Float Cell. Let's get in Lux right. Let's heal up Monster Raptor and let's heal up Infernip. Probably even heal up Dialga, just to be sure. Oh, never mind, I, I'll be confident enough. I think Dialga doesn't need to come at 12 health. Maybe I'll be punished for it, but I think I'll be fine. There we go. Everyone is ready and going for the next round. Now I'm gonna switch in Luxray. Oh, I forgot the burn on Float Cell. Can't have that going. Burn heal on Float Cell. There we go. Do you have any regular potions or are they all out? Let's use a potion just to be challenges. There we go. Alright, now it's time for our next Elite Four. This is going to be the final Elite Four as well to fight. Here we go. Purple Room, what can this be? Like a ghost type maybe? Well, well time to see. Ah, you timed your arrival well. You just finished reading a book, you see. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Lucian. I'm a user of the psychic type. I must say you already proven yourself to be outstanding by coming this far. They say I'm the toughest of Elite Four. I'm afraid I'll have to go all out against you to live up to that reputation. Final Elite Four member, it's gonna be Lucian, and he is the master of psychic type Pokemon. Here we go. First Pokemon abusing will be Mr. Mime. And Luxray will be my choice, because Luxray knows Crunch. Reduces attack power, but that doesn't really matter much, because Psychic is almost always out about special attack. Let's use the Crunch. Reflect by Mr. Mime, which is going to be a good thing, which will reduce, increase his defense by about a third. Crunch, super effective regardless. Less than half. I can crunch again. Psychic by Mr. Mime. This should hurt. Psychic is pretty powerful. Takes me about half health. Crunch again. Whoa, I crit! Lucky me! So, when we reflect on, that takes it all out. Mr. Mime goes down. Next up will be Bronzong. Now, I'm gonna switch up my party a bit and use Infernape. Reason is because Bronzong is an extreme tough Pokemon to fight. It is very weak offensively. Man, he's tanky. Super high defense, super high special defense, 
Psychic and Steel dual types. That's why I want to face off against Bronzo. And I'll start it by giving it a Flamethrower. It's also slow, that's why I'm getting the first strike. It's weak to fire. Weak to ground as well. Flamethrower look, it takes just, just more than half. But Bronzo also has a berry. It's a gyro ball. Don't know why I want to use a gyro ball though, because it's not very effective against uh, both the fighting and against a fire type, but that's fine. I'll use another flamethrower on Bronzong. I won't take it all out though, unless I crit. No, it's in the red zone. That most likely means Lucian will be using a potion to recover. That's fine. I restore some health. And here comes the Psychic. This might actually be it for Infernape. It's weak to Psychic moves. Stab bonus and all. It's a one hit KO by Bronson. Unfortunate, but that can happen. It's very tough, very strong. It can use Calm Mind as well. So that's a bit of an. Uh, a lame thing to use. Oh yeah, don't use ground moves against Bronzong, by the way, because Bronzong is... That doesn't... He has a weakness to ground, but he's levitating. So he's immune to ground. <sighs> oh well. That was a bit unfortunate. Because now he most likely will be healing himself up with a potion. Alright. Wanna play games, Bronzong? Let's play. Here's Dialga. Dialga is very strong against his moves. It's a Dragon Claw. Full restore on Bronzong, which means Bronzong is back to full health. A change of losing a turn. Dragon Claw by Dialga. Not very effective. The reflect goes off now this time. Now use this turn to recover some health on Infernape. Max Revive I'll actually use, just to save time. This is Max Revive on Infernape to give it back to full health. There we go. Also using Gyro Ball. Again. Not very effective, but that's fine. Let's see what we can do in the change. No, it's not going to be very effective, not very effective. Can't really do much. I'm gonna take a risk now. I'm gonna change Infernape probably in again. This might be a bit of a risk though. Because if Bronzong uses Psychic now, this is gonna be the end for me. Or should we say the Infernape? Durable. That's good. Not very effective against Infernape. So we go with a Flamethrower again. Just to punish out damage. The question is, what will Bronzong use in return? My shell bell will heal a bit, but if it hits with Psychic now, it's gonna be over. It doesn't! It goes with Jar Ball instead! Good thing for me! I don't know why it doesn't want to use Jar Ball, but that's his choice. Flamethrower. That's gonna be it for Bronzong. That means we have taken down two of his Pokémon. It's quite a little long episode because these battles are going a bit long, but that's fine. Down goes the Bronzong. Let's recover our health. And next up will be... Alakazam. Okay, so Alakazam will be the next Pokémon to fight. And actually there's gonna be a bit of a coward, not maybe a coward, but I'm gonna go all out and power against Alakazam. Could use Luxra as well, but I think Luxra is gonna be outsped. And maybe even did take out by Alakazam in a single hit. So let's give Alakazam a little bit of fighting for its trouble. I just wanna check. Is Roar of Time special? It is a special move. 150 attack power. I'm confident. Let's use Roar of Time. Psychic on Dialga. Very effective because Dialga is resistant to psychic attacks. 
Mirror of Time. Will this be enough to KO Algazam? Let's see. It's very hard hitting. Stab bonus as well. He also agrees power from the uh, the ball I'm having. But it's enough, and Algazam goes down. Rose Red level 54. Next up will be Medicham. Let's switch in Staraptor for this one. Medicham, which is part fighting, part psychic. Which means it's not that strong against flying moves. Level 60 though. I'm confident we'll reduce his attack power as well, in case he wants to use a fighting type move, and I'll use a Brave Bird. Get a first strike as well against Medicham. Enough. It is! One hit KO on Medicham! The Brave Bird does the damage. And look how much damage I took in return though. That's fine though. I had to do it anyways. And the final Pokemon will be Giraffarig. Normal and Psychic. Let's just stick with Raptor. KO Giraffarig, this battle is over. Hmm, now what should I do? Well, choke on this, Brave Bird. Crunch by Giraffarig. Just enough damage. Brave Bird. This will most likely KO uh, Staraptor. I can do some damage to Giraffarig as well. Ooh, pretty heavy. The Raptor actually survives. Pretty impressive. Traffic will KO Raptor now with a double hit. That's fine. Crit as well, just to make it better or worse, should we say. Now, how should we finish off this Traffic? Which Pokemon is the fastest of these ones? Symphonip. Okay, we'll find a pin. And let's finish it off with a flamethrower. We can't use close combat because it's strong against uh, fighting moves. It's a flamethrower. Let's see if this can take out Giraffarig. If it is, it's over. It is. Giraffarig goes down. Long episode this has become, but that's fine. We recover. Shell Bell. Some XP and illusion is down. I see. You're getting past the three before me was no fluke. Your power is real. Congratulations, you're now beaten the Elite Four. However, that doesn't mean you're done with the Pokemon League. There remains the champion. I should warn you, the champion is far stronger than the Elite Four. Now go on. Step through the doorway to your final battle. Oh, when we will. So this is now over. We have beaten the Elite Four. The champion awaits. You might even know who the champion is by the time we talk now. Anyways, next episode we're gonna fight the Pokemon champion. If we win, we are the champion of the Sina region. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like or feedback when we talk about this game. Leave a comment below. Also make sure to subscribe to my channel to get content updates, and that's gonna be it for now. I'll see you guys next time as my story of Pokemon Diamond continues.